Hi, welcome to houseimprovements.com. I'm Shannon, and in today's video, I want to show you how to install Vinyl J Channel. So, vi Vinyl J Channel uh, really gets its name obviously from the way it looks uh, shaped like a J, right? Now, this trim or this type of uh, piece is used for trimming around obstacles on your wall, like around windows, doors, uh, really anything that's got a edge on it that you need to go around. And what it provides is a place, once it's on here, for the end of the, the cut end of the siding to be hidden in behind. And it also hides the fact that your si vinyl siding uh, is cut a little bit short to allow for expansion and contraction. Okay, so basically it's just a trim piece to put around obstacles. Um, so this, in, in our uh, obstacle today is just gonna be this piece of wood. This could be a window. Uh, could be uh, a door, anything like that. But for right now, we just uh, screwed a piece of wood on the wall and that's what we're gonna use for our, our example. J-channel, uh, depending on the manufacturer you're using, uh, can come in uh, many different sizes and it generally will come in any color you need to match your siding. So you can see on this one, uh, I, think, I think the actual depth here is the same or really close, but the height here on the finished lip is uh, quite a bit different. I think this is three quarters and this is one inch. And they, they can vary a little bit, like I said, from manufacturer to manufacturer. So um, you need to keep that in mind as you're uh, doing your measuring and cutting. Now, uh, I should just mention that we do have a lot of other vinyl siding videos on our channel. So if this isn't exactly what you're looking for when you search vinyl siding, just check out our channel and uh, you'll likely find the other aspect that you were actually wanting. Back to our J channel. Uh, there's a bit of a process to, to use when you're going around an object like this, a bit of an order. So you wanna start with your bottom piece first and then your two side pieces and then your top piece. Now the reason for that is that you want your as your pieces go up the wall, you want them to be overlapping the other pieces so that they're shedding water properly. And I don't have this cut properly right now to be able to fit it in place, but you'll see that all as we go. So basically you start at the bottom, work your way to the top so that the pieces are lapping much like, you know, kind of like shingles. So they shed the water properly. Okay, so one of the first things you're gonna wanna do when you're ready to start installing or cutting it is you obviously wanna measure the width of your bottom right from the outside to outside. Now, as I was mentioning, your siding widths are a little different. Uh, so you need this measurement plus the width of your channel on each side. So you can see here, if we were using that as our size, we obviously need one inch extra on each side. If we're using this one, we only need three quarters of an inch or whatever it measures on each side. And I think, I'm sure this one's three quarters, this white, yeah. Okay, so, if I measure this, I've got uh, 20 and, uh, well, let's just call it 21, just uh, for easy numbers to work with. So 21, and I wanna add three quarters and three quarters, that's another inch and a half, so I need to cut this at 22 and a half inches. Obviously yours is probably gonna be something totally different, but just so you have the idea. Okay, so I've already cut this. This should be my bottom piece, like that. So I just simply uh, took some snips, I'll cut off, cut on this, scrap piece here. You can mark your pencil line, you can square it with a square if you need to, and then you can just simply make your cuts, fold that over, cut the bottom. Now I did that all without a square, but you could trace your line around there with a square if you needed to. So it cuts really easy, easy with just a pair of aviation snips. Uh, so really that's the main tool that you're gonna need. So we've got our bottom piece. That's this one. Now there's a couple of cuts we need to do on it uh, before we put it on the wall. And one of them is we need to make a notch uh, that will look like this. If you can look down there. We need to take a notch out of the bottom edge, which actually is the top when we flip this around because it's going this way. So we need a notch here. Now there's a set of tools like this. Uh, we'll probably include a link in the description below the video. Uh, but there's a tool like this that you can use 
and it just sim simply slides in there. And you can do a couple different things with that tool. Again, I'll do it on the scrap first. You can totally cut a piece out like that. If I squeeze far enough, it just cuts the piece right out. Or if I only squeeze part way, it leaves me a tab like this. And you'll see exactly why we need those tabs in a minute as we move along here. For right now on the bottom one, we need to notch it right out. We need to notch it. We're using three quarter inch trim, so we need to notch, make that notch three quarters of an inch. So again, you can measure that if you want. On here, I've got a little mark on my, uh, on my notchers for how far I need to go for three quarters of an inch. And I just simply slide it in there and squeeze it out. For this bottom piece, I don't want that in there. Now, if you, uh, if you're, if you don't want to buy that notcher, you can use your knife too and your snips. Uh, I was going to say, don't tell me I don't have a pencil. Here's a pencil. So I'm just going to mark my three quarters of an inch on here. Okay, so I've got, I know I've got to go in that far. I'm going to take my snips and cut right in this corner at the front edge and the back edge, right back to my line. And I can bend that up then like that and I can just simply cut that out of there. It takes a little bit of practice doing it that way and just you need a sharp knife and everything but it basically gives you you can see that gives you the same same thing on both ends. Okay so once once we've got that this piece is uh, ready to install as long as I've cut it quite deep enough and I haven't quite. I'm just going to give this a little extra notch on this end. Okay, so to install it, it's just as easy. So I want to slide this piece up. I'm going to slide it over till my notches are at the edge of my window or whatever I'm going around. And then it's got these slotted holes in it down here below. So I usually start in the middle, if I can. I put the nail in the middle of that slot and I nail it in. Uh, now, a lot of the manufacturers recommend that you leave the nailing loose, just like vinyl siding, so that that can move. Honestly, I, I don't do that. I nail it just a little snug. So it kind of pinches it, not really pinches it, but just holds it in place a little better. I've never really seen a problem with J-Channel uh, wanting to distort because it's been nailed too tight. So. My recommendation is to nail it just snug. Most manufacturers say to nail it just like siding so that you can actually move it a little bit by hand. So you do what you feel like you want to follow. Uh, so we've got that piece on. That's all we need for that. Now uh, on the sides, which is our next step, it's a little bit different. So we're going to measure uh, our whatever we're cutting around again, right? And uh, we're going to add the same amount that we did before for the width of the channel. So we know that's inch and a half total, three quarters and three quarters for this case. So I cut my piece. Uh, now on one end, at the top end, I need a notch just like we just did on the bottom piece. Okay, so just like that, that's done. But on this end, it's a little different. We need to cut, uh, like I did with the notchers, where I've got this tab that bends. Okay, so we would have clipped it. Now I've got a tab, then I take my snips and what I do is I cut a nice mitered cut on there so that it looks kind of picture framed on the corner when I put it in. Now what happens when I put this all together, I need to get that tab inside of here and horizontal, just like so, so that this all fits in nice and you can see how this, this uh, folded over edge here caps over the end of that cut off piece that we've got on the bottom and it just gives you a nice mitered corner on the bottom. Now I've seen people just leave this square that's fine if that's what you want but the key is you, you do need this side piece to overlap onto the bottom piece so that it sheds water properly. Okay so once you've got that all cut the way you like it and fitting simply nail it on again. And usually about every second or third hole is good enough. 
Okay, so we've got that piece. Okay, so let's let's just go through uh, that again for this side. So this piece is going to go on this way. So I know at the top I just need a notch, and it's going to be cut right out. So I'll slide that in, cut that out. On the bottom, I need a tab that's going to fold over. So I'll slide this in, and I'll just squeeze a little bit so I get the tab. Then I take my snips. You can take a square. If you've got a speed square or something and you want a line on there to fall, that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to freehand it. It's giving me a little trouble. And I'll just cut that out. So I've got this, like that. Okay, so this should all fit in there. We may have to do some fine tuning if it's not quite right. Now what I've got is I've, you can see we're nice and tight on this corner, but I've got a bit of a space right here. So that's telling me that this, this end of here is just a little bit long. So I'm gonna snip that off. A lot of times I will cut those just a little bit long and, and uh, trim it to fit after so that I don't end up short because I mismeasured or anything like that. So again, I just push it on there. Double check that the top's okay, and it is. And nail it in. Okay, so we've got that. Our corners are looking good. They're overlapping the right direction and uh, everything should be fitting fine. Now, uh, one of the next th things before we do the J channel across the top is we, when we have something like this that uh, isn't protected by the over, like the eave of the house or something like that, we need another piece uh, called a window and door cap. And it basically sits on here against the wall, sticks out and it sheds water uh, out over top of this and that would go on next. Okay, so uh, like I said, we need a piece of drip cap. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, the one way I like to do it is I simply fit my, this is what your window and door cap or drip cap will look like, okay? So like I said, what that does is it just gets the water running down here and it gets it away from the surface so that it can drip off and fall free to the ground hopefully. So, like I said, a couple different ways that you can do this. Uh, you can just simply uh, set this piece in there like that and then cut your top J channel. This, this strip would be nailed as well. And then cut your top J channel to just fit in around it or over it, I should say. Like that. Okay. Or you can cut it so that it fits in between, like it fits between here and here, but it's got a tab to bend over. And this way uh, works a little better for shedding the water back into the J. Oops, I don't have it quite notched quite enough. And I'll show you how to cut this in a minute, but I just want to fit it in there and show you what I'm talking about first. But I've cut it a little big. Okay, so it had the, this one had the tabs on, so I can set it in there and I can fold those tabs around. And what that does, uh, how can I show this? What that does is it allows the water, any water that doesn't run off here, if it runs to the side, that little tab just helps direct it outside of the J channel and not in behind the J channel where it can run in here and maybe rot whatever this is. So I see this done quite a bit where it's just this first one that I showed you, but it does leave a little gap up here. Um, it's just really hard for me to show you this. Oops. Let me just quickly mock that up. So with, the, with this one that doesn't have the tabs, basically you end up with a, a corner like that up at the top. Now, if it's not perfect, there's gonna be a gap there or the water might just actually find its way through there. With this one, when you put the tab in there, you know that the water is 
99% of it's going to be directed down into the J channel, which will fall along the wall and come out from and not go behind whatever whatever you've got on the wall, your window, whatever it is, right? Okay, so this one with the tabs is a better idea. And it's it's really not much harder to do. So you've got the, the J channel at this point. Now simply take your tape measure, measure right from outside of J channel to outside of J channel. Okay, 22 and a half in, in my case. Take a piece of stock J, cut it to 22 and a half. Then what you need to do is, because uh, we know that our distance here is three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch, I just measure back from the end, three quarters of an inch, put a line on both ends. Okay, then I made another line from there over here. Just I'm just making my tab because I've got to cut that out by hand. Okay. So then once I have that all marked out, I can cut it out with the snips. So we're getting rid of that front corner piece because we don't need that because that's where this J channel is going to be on each end. And then I'm just cutting at a bit of an angle this tab. So that's just kind of wedge shaped a little bit and then it folds down easier. So I'll do the same thing on this end. Yeah, it's a couple more steps, but I think it's a better, better way of doing it. Um, honestly, don't know. I may have invented this. I have no idea. I don't think I did, but uh, I just kind of come up with it a couple years ago, and I like it better than just the piece sitting in there. So, so we've got it. Now I'm I'm making sure that this tab is getting in, ouch getting inside of here, not not in between the two. I don't want it back in there. I want it inside the J channel that it's on top of. Okay, and I push that down tight, fold those tabs down, and I'm gonna nail that in place. Same thing, I just, I nail it snug. Okay, so we've got this sitting down flat, so it's not the bottom part here isn't tipped up like that. It's sitting down in there nice and flat and square. We've got our piece there. So now we can finally do our last piece of J channel. Okay, so our last piece is uh, measured again. We can measure right from here to here. That gives us our length. But on this piece, we need tabs on both ends and a miter on both ends to finish it off. Okay. Any luck at all, I've got this cut the right length. Now, you know, really you because we've we've got the we've done this system where we've got the tab on there, we probably could just eliminate these tabs because they're kind of redundant. And they do make it a little bit crowded in there. So if you want to cut those off, that'd be fine. I'm gonna just leave them on. Get that all tucked in there, fold those around. It's a little tight because we've got the other ones in behind, but you can see what we end up with there and then we just simply nail it again when you're nailing a J over top of another piece of trim like that these slots will never line up with the other ones don't be too worried about that just make sure you're getting your J down uh, nice and low and tight down into that corner okay so we've got that We've got a nice mitered finish kind of look all the way around. We've got our proper drip cap on the top to shed the water uh, away from the top edge. Uh, now something else that I'll usually do is if I've got wrap on this surface, the wrap I would have had cut and just kind of stapled up out of the way for now. I would then, once I'm at this point, release it down, trim it off so it's just, just kind of right at this nail line in the J channel and then run a strip of tape across there. And that just keeps any moisture that got behind the siding up above this, whatever you're, you jade, uh, it keeps that moisture uh, from going in behind all of this and, and into here. It gets it out into the J and where it should be. In this case, we've got our house wrap behind the foam. Uh, so what I do then is I just simply take a piece of house wrap tape 
end. I tape this top edge. I just tape it to the point where it covers those nail slots, maybe an eighth of an inch below them. I'm not really caring that whether the complete nail head is covered or not, but I'm just making sure those slots are covered. So any moisture that gets behind the siding, same idea. You can run down, hit this tape, get out over top these back lips on the uh, trim and into the J and shed where it needs to go. And in fact, I probably would have made this tape just a couple inches longer. But uh, Okay, I think that basically covers uh, J channel. Now, like I said, I think in the beginning of the video, video this J channel gets used a lot in, in siding. It'll get used around windows doors. Uh, you can see over here on this house uh, we've used a different type of corner so we've had to put J-channel up against the corner. There'll be J-channel usually up underneath the soffit up there. Uh, just all kinds of different places like that where you can use it and you're going to need to use it. Uh, I think that's really all I can show you. Uh, hopefully that ex explained any questions you had. If it didn't please go to our forum. There's a link below for the forum. Uh, ask your questions there, I can definitely ask, uh, answer. Uh, give us a thumbs up on the video if you liked it, as usual. Uh, subscribe if you've, I don't know why you wouldn't have by now, but if you haven't subscribed to houseimprovements.com, now is your chance. Hit the sub uh, button there as well, and uh, you'll be uh, linked in with us, and you'll see all our, all our videos and uh, see our channel and everything. Uh, we've Facebook, Twitter, Patreon all the social media stuff that we're on. You can check it all out as well. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.